the Reconstructionist Radio Podcast Network presents The Kingdom Driven Family Podcast with your host, Andrea Schwartz. This podcast will equip and empower you to help advance Christ's kingdom through God's primary institution, the family, building a home that serves Christ and His kingdom. the February 12th edition of Homeschooling Helps. I'm Andrea Schwartz and that nice lady across the aisle, or I should say across the country or however you want to look at it, is my co-host Nancy Will. Hey, Nancy. Hi. Hi, Andrea. It's good to be here. Good to see you again. Always ready for another episode. Right. So. All right. So today um, you said that the you titled this talk establishing a vision of victory uh victory about about what 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 are you talking about victory okay so like anything else having to do with being a home educator you have to be solid in what it is you think and believe you might not have to know everything about every subject there is but at the core if you don't know where you are in the kingdom of God and where you're heading, you know, somebody famous once said, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there because it doesn't matter. You don't have a destination in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, as believers, we do have a destination in mind. And if we examine the scriptures from beginning to end, from the very outset, when God said everything was good, that meant that things would work well. Well, we all know that a little kink happened there where Adam and Eve decided that they would make those decisions for themselves. And it's not like everything fell apart. It's just that the relationship with God was injured and now sin affected things. But that didn't change the calling God gave Adam and Eve. It just made it that they were going to now have to deal with their own sinful nature and each other's sinful nature and all their progeny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that we talk about when you're uh, a road that's going to get you somewhere, you also have to know where you're starting. So that's a really important point to, to know that we start with the truth of um, sin and our need for Christ. Right. And these past number of episodes, we've been establishing who God is the, the names of God as creator, as the one who sustains us, um, and the fact that he foreordains whatever comes to pass. So that's the foundation for this. Well, after Adam and Eve sinned, there was a promise, and the promise was of the Messiah. But there was also a promise of a war, that the seed of the serpent would be at war with the seed of the woman. Mm -hmm. And if you don't recognize the war that the believer is involved in, you're going to be at a huge deficit in terms of plowing through anything in life, let alone homeschooling. Mm -hmm. So when you say war, you're not talking about guns and bullets. You're talking about a, a spiritual battle of ideas and, and for um, the, the battle for people's soul and eternal, eternal destiny, right? Is that the war that you're talking about? Right. I'm talking about the principalities and powers that arrayed themselves against the Lord and his anointed. And as believers, we are among the anointed. All right. So if we think that if we just homeschool, everything will be hunky dory. Our children will be just fine. They won't have all those icky influences. And then somehow or other they grow up. But wait a minute. Are they going to then enter the war? Do we bunker down? Do we just go find a cave that we can live in? Or are we supposed to engage in this war? Mm -hmm. Well, I submit we're to engage in this war. And Jesus tells us that they hated him first. They'll hate you. But he tells us that we have rules for this war. We're not allowed to make them up as we go along any more than Adam and Eve were allowed to make up the rules as they went along. Okay. All okay. right. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know that the victory has been won by Christ, and a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, yeah, the victory happened at the cross, but they don't live like they're in the midst of 
seeing that victory. What they do is they live in terms of tragedy. Mm-hmm. So think of all the movies and all the novels and all the television programs, or if you watch the news, oh, it's terrible. This people are doing this and this person's uh, suggesting that. And oh, there are going to be attacks on homeschooling. And what about the persecution of Christians? If that's our focus, then we're not having the vision of victory. And it matters. I personally don't want people in a war with me who think we're going to lose if we're lucky. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 All right. So if we're going to engage, we have to really understand that all power in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus Christ. Therefore, homeschool. Therefore, affect those in your community. Therefore, preach the gospel. In other words, we've been told that the only ally we need, we have. We don't need anything more than Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't mean you just walk around with your Bible and you never have to get better at anything you do. No, of course you have to learn. You have to get experience. But if in your teaching you're approaching things from the point of view of, yeah, we're going to lose or look at where the Christians lost here or really everything's getting worse and worse, Mm -hmm. then we're not being faithful to Jesus's commission that says, go out and do this. And oh, by the way, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the age. Right. Even to the end of the age. Yeah. And, and a lot of times if we don't have that, um, if we don't have a, a good long-term vision as and that of victory, then then we do sort of tend to withdraw and escape and look for um, look for an easy out, a, a quick out, you know, whether it's um, you know, um, and the idea of wars and rumors of wars and, you know, all this kind of stuff. When we start talking about the end of the age and the end of time, what's that going to look like? And we miss doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. And I'll tell you, and you know this for a fact, having been a wife and a mother and a grandmother and all sorts of business owner now, mm-hmm. you know, there are plenty of wars that show up. They just don't always seem so important that, um, you know, so you, you paid your bill, for example, and the electric company didn't receive it. So they turn off your electricity. Oh, gee, I'm involved in warfare here. It feels that way if you have no electricity and it's cold. Right. So right. we need to whatever happens to us, we need to have this view that says there's victory here. Mm-hmm. And that way we won't relent. We won't give up because the more and it also depends on what your diet is. And I don't mean your food diet. If you just decide you're going to watch your news program, whether it's the conservative news program or the liberal news program, and you're going to hear what they consider news, which is usually bad news. It's not mm-hmm. usually this that saved somebody's life. And this one found uh, a new procedure for a surgery that will help do this or that. We don't usually hear that. The problem is those things that we hear that are positive are a result of God blessing our culture, God blessing mm-hmm. the world. Right. And it's up to Christians to use these new advancements and these new technologies righteously. Mm -hmm. And so when you're dealing, let's get it back now to the homeschool kitchen table. Yeah. Right. So like, what does this have to do with our curriculum? Right. Well, it has to do with our orientation to learning. So we've picked our books. We've, we've prayed about it. These are the best books that we can get for whatever subject we're doing and a particular child is struggling, Mm -hmm. well, you could decide he or she's not very smart or, you know, not everybody has everything, right? That's not a vision of victory. Where is that child, when he becomes an adult, going to learn how to deal with difficulties? Let's say say you're talking to a daughter who struggles with mathematics. Well, whether or not she becomes a mathematician or needs to use math in, in whatever more so than everyday things. She's had to learn how to overcome a difficulty. Well, what if by the time she becomes a mom, she has a child with special needs or a particular illness or condition? Well, she's going to have to find out 
what all the literature is about that. She's going to have to try to find a physician maybe to help her, evaluate whether or not that physician is good and is going to give her good advice. She's got to know how to get multitude of counselors. And just because it's hard doesn't mean she gives up. Right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where, yeah. even as you, as the homeschooling educator, have to have a vision of victory that says we're going to get through this, we're going to learn what we need to know, by example, and then by application, so does your child learn. Mm -hmm. There are answers here. God wouldn't have started us on this journey if there are no answers mm -hmm. here. Right. Sometimes we think when we sit down to math that the, that the end, that victory means I have a math student sufficient for rocket science tree, you know, or, and, and really, um, you know, we can recognize what God is permitting us to learn those, those things, those research and those hard things. But, but she also needs to be able, there's still economics involved. She still has to be able to do math. She still is going to have to budget and measure and, you know, all those kind of things. So we don't want to just give up, but we do need to push through and say, what is it that God is bringing us to? It may not be rocket scientist uh, math, but it might be something else. So there is victory there. It may not be what we right. anticipate necessarily. Right. And I really think we ought to get away from that. The end goal is graduating them out and just getting rid of them or okay. I took care of that. I got them all the way up to high school and now I'm done. Mm -hmm. Well, in yeah. many cases as a parent and as a teacher of these children, your work isn't done. It just moves into a different realm. Yes. Uh, that is really, really true. Yeah, yeah, we're not done. We we just move into a different relationship with our children. Right. If we accept the paradigm of statist education, then our our uh, benchmark or our metric for saying are we doing a good job will be things like standardized tests and how they did on their SATs and mm -hmm. whether or not they graduated with honors. I'm not saying mm -hmm. those things aren't important, but make sure the metric has as much to do, if not more to do, with the kingdom of God and their service in the kingdom of God. Because mm -hmm. I hope, I certainly didn't spend my time so that my graduates, quote unquote, would decide they have no responsibility in the world. Right, right. Now, I may not always agree with the choices they make or how they choose to function, but I can still be an influence. And because I knew I can go back to remember when you were having difficulty with this or remember when you found this very easy or remember when we observed what happened with somebody else in another family. In other words, if they see that you believe that in time and eternity, there's victory, it's going to be contagious. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if they see the otherwise, that also will be contagious. Well, there is a um, there is goal in homeschooling and there is an end point in homeschooling. And we sometimes tend to, to look at these things in very, very small ways, you know, like um, what we finished um, high school and now we can get a scholarship to college, you know, or it, instead of looking at, and even, um, even just getting through the books, you know, we, we tend to look at the end of the book or the end of the year as, reaching our goal or being victorious. How many people go and look into college for their MRS degree? That That's not the kind of victory and goals that we're talking about. We're talking about the, um, the kingdom of God and his call on our life. And what are those things that he requires of us? That's what we need to be, be thinking about in terms of our curriculum as well. Right. Well, let me just back up here a little bit. For those okay. of you who might that have slipped over, the MRS degree is being Mrs. Getting Married. <laughs> and I am so tired, personally, of acting like that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, now, if you go to a school to learn things that are important for kingdom service, I would imagine your school selection would have something to do that would say, hmm, I'm likely to meet somebody who shares my world and life view. It's probably the highest calling that a woman can be given to be, become a wife 
After all, that's why the first woman was created, taken from the rib of her husband, so she could be his helpmate. Now, what happens after that, of course, is they're fruitful and they multiply. They have children and she moves into the role of being a mother. And in today's world, either you find a really good Christian school to educate your children or you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think you're reflecting a little bit of the attitude of the criticism that was levied against women in terms of, oh, you just want to become a wife. I think that's a really high calling. But I, I think, think it's a high calling. I agree right. with you. It is a high calling. But if that is just the end goal and you still don't see that the big vision of victory in kingdom work and calling of that, it's it it can be just another um, event, you know, like we have. Well, clearly, a, and that would be true of anything, Nancy. That would be true sure, of anything. We sure. would be saying whether yeah. finishing the book, graduating college or getting married, whatever it is. If we don't have that big eternal view of our our kingdom responsibility, then it's we'll we'll still just uh, miss the uh, the big vision. Exactly. But mm -hmm. I, the vision along the way is also really important. So mm -hmm. think about it. When you're home educating your children, you are influencing their children who are not yet born, their sure. children's children who are yet to be born. Mm -hmm. And the influence can't be underrated mm -hmm. because I'll tell you why. Statism wants your children as early as possible. Those statist educators must realize that these years are so important because they want them all. They want if they could have year round school and, and some places do, they would. Sure. Right. So don't minimize that your time with your children not only needs it to be well spent, but you're modeling for them what should be in their future. Now, here's the mistake that I think a lot of families make. OK. They come to faith. They come to understanding. Oh, this is what God requires of us. The Bible should be our guide for all areas of life. And they teach their children that. But too often they teach their children their conclusions rather than teaching God's word. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Sure. Now, you and I have grown children. Yep. They don't always agree with our orientation on everything. Right. But we prepared them a particular way mm -hmm. and we can go back to what does the word of God say or how should it be done? The problem, I think, when people decide that their vision has to be their children's vision. It's going to not always look the way you want, but the, 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 the way you evaluate it is, is this child loving God and keeping his commandments? Is this child now an adult? I say child because he's our child or she's our child. Are they living honestly and with integrity? Mm -hmm. Right. Those are the things we've instilled. If all we instilled was recognizing the noun or the verb or being able to, you know, list off the elements on the periodic table, we've grossly failed. Yes. Yes. But our children aren't going to look like us. I, I've heard things in the past, you know, what's the five year vision for your family? What's the hundred year vision for your family? I, I kind of go, what? I mean, if, if I was living off the hundred year vision of my ancestors, I may not be, I might be doing something that God's word says shouldn't be done. Right. We need to teach God's word and then trust that the Holy Spirit will guide people. Yes, yes, yes. If and I think we if we, and let me just say this. If we have this vision of victory that the Holy Spirit is going to guide and direct the people of God, then we won't feel like we have to do it all. Too many believers decide they have to be the Holy Spirit. And I'm yeah. sorry, that job is taken. It, it, it is. It is. It is taken. And if we fail um, in a vic vision of victory, then what we are really saying is that the Holy Spirit is insufficient or um, inadequate in um, in doing his his work. And, and that is never that's that's never uh, the case. Right. You know, we live in it in a in a state of defeat and death rather than um, recognizing the sufficiency in Christ and in um, victory. 
right that, that we have and the power of god to change people the power of the holy spirit in our life and what two people forget is that the holy spirit had the power to change them nobody yeah. i know including me was non-rebellious was not trying to say my will not god's will so if we if we are happy with our regeneration theologically we better get it straight that we didn't produce it mm -hmm. we didn't even look for god because left on our own devices we would have continued to ignore him because we right. were really good at that right 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 so too many people look at the sword of the spirit as the bludgeon of the spirit as the mm -hmm. hammer of the spirit. In other words, you know, I think the Bible is so important. I'm going to beat you up with it. Right. That's not how it works. That's not how people are brought to faith. First, they hear mm -hmm. and they see it modeled. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit does the work. So we have a very important function. But for parents who thought that they were going to do this formula and then they were going to have these products that's their effort as opposed to god will provide and i see and again this vision of victory has to go out throughout the whole curriculum how do you look at the crusades how do you look at the war of independence do you view it from the point of view of god is victorious in forwarding his people correcting his people disciplining his people purging his enemies you know if you don't have this sense that we are on the winning team and live that way, mm -hmm. you're not much help to your fellow soldiers in Christ. Right, right. We do have a tendency to look at things very um, personally, you know, like this is about our personal salvation and and we in victory for some people, success is going to be their children, you know, making a profession of faith or demonstrating a certain you know, um, reaching certain uh, milestones in their life. And, um, and, and we can't do that. Salvation is of the Lord. Um, all this is about him and um, not just, not just our little, our little box that we have a tendency to put our lives and our children and our curriculum in. Right. Right. So I'd like to make a recommendation. We're not quite at the end of our time yet, but I'm going to make this recommendation. It's a book entitled God's Plan for Victory. Mm -hmm. And it's concise and it's um, easy to read. And it basically discusses the various prevalent theological positions in terms of what it means to be a Christian pursuing the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. right? And I think that if you approach this book from a point of view that I'm going to listen to what the author says. And then at the end, like anything else, evaluate for yourself. Is this particular view consistent with scripture or is this view consistent with scripture? Mm -hmm. And it's important that you understand this, even if you never thought that, you know, the subject of eschatology, in other words, how everything turns out was really of importance to you. It ends up being important for these reasons. First of all, you need to know and evaluate what a particular perspective leads to. What are the logical conclusions, right? Yeah. So if I have a problem and, and my hand hurts and I decide, oh, I guess that's just what happens with age. When you get to a certain point, your body aches, all right? I can live with that perspective. And then my other hand hurts and then my knee hurts. And then, you know, sometimes I get headaches. If I've decided that this is how it all turns out once you get past the age of 50, and I'm well past the age of 50, but <laughs> that that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to look for answers. But if, mm -hmm. on the other hand, my hand starts to hurt and I, I don't know why it hurts, well, then I start figuring out, well, you know, did I injure a bone in my hand? I have to know something about anatomy here. Um, I need to go find somebody who can give me some um, insight as to why it hurts. And then I discover, oh, it's because, you know, you're using your mouse a particular way. Get a different mouse for your computer and it'll be different. And see, if I posit that there are answers, that's part of a vision of victory. But if I just decide this is what happens when you get old. Yeah. So if we look at that in terms of um, not just, you know, your hand and, and your mouse, but 
you know, things that are happening in our world. You know, if we if we take the idea that um, this whole world belongs to the devil and it's horrible and and you know everything we know is just going to burn so so don't worry about it you know then then we don't then we don't look and see real biblical solutions you know some of the right. you remember the old um idea the old story about the guy who went to the doctor and said you know it hurts when i do this and the doctor said well quit doing this you know like if we'll look at the bible and and and, and not just as a place to go feel good you know to make me feel right. happy but to go and get real solutions then we might find that when we do that we're doing this we really might should quit doing this you know, exactly. sometimes we just, you know, beating our own exactly. head against the wall and God says, hey, turn around, honey, come walk this way. And, you know, we're surprised that our head hurts when we keep beating it against the wall. Right. Which means that going back to the passage we've talked about before, without vision, the people perish. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. The very next verse says, and happy are they that keep the law. So the law is our means to achieving the victory in Christ because we'll find out to stop doing this or whatever it is that we're doing it. You see, it's really very simple and basic. We don't have to go heavy duty theological on this, mm -hmm. you know, but we have to, when we have a defiant child, don't write it off to the terrible twos. You're not going to find the terrible twos in the Bible or mm -hmm. now that my daughter's a teenager, mm -hmm. you're not going to find teenager in the Bible. Those are just ways in which to say we're going to lose because everybody else loses this way. At least misery will have company. No, no, no. that's yeah. not a vision of victory. Right, right. And, and back to our starting point again, um, you know, to recognize that the sin, you know, that's that's a, a place where we need to look and see that 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 our problem is not. Um, our environment, our problem is not the curriculum, the pro it's not, you know, educate, lack of education. A lot of times our problem is really sin. And if we don't go look at God's word then and, and see the remedy for that and the places where we need to repent and hear the Holy Spirit in those ways, then it, it we will just, just stay in a, and maintain a lifestyle of death or defeatist mentality and keep beating our head against the wall and not not live in the victory that is ours in Christ. Yes. Another way to look at the problems that life brings us are opportunities to build our kingdom muscles. And that's really what we're supposed to do. So instead of saying, oh, here's another problem, here's another issue, we say, wow, here's another problem. Here's another issue. Yeah. I can be victorious because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, those mm -hmm. all things better be in line with the scripture because he's not mm -hmm. going to help you be a better embezzler or a better fornicator or a better lazy, slothful person because the Bible mm -hmm. says that's not what it means to be in service to the kingdom. But mm -hmm. um that I, I'm getting a greater sense of when in the book of James, it says, consider it all joy, brethren, when you face trials and tribulations. It's kind of like, oh boy, now we get a chance to see God in action as we're obedient. And that's mm -hmm. the vision of victory that's only possible if you put on the glasses of scripture and you read it the way he said it. Right. Right. And that's why I'm going to go back to my recommendation. This book, God's Plan for Victory by Rush Dooney, basically highlights the passages of scripture, which makes it incontrovertible. We are on the winning side. And, I, you know, sometimes you want to realize that God came up and had to slap you upside the head and say, would you stop acting like this is in doubt what's going to happen here? Mm -hmm. Even if you die tomorrow in Christ, you're standing in the throne room before the Lord himself. So mm -hmm. it's not exactly a win-lose situation. Mm -hmm. It's very much a win-win situation. Certainly is. It certainly is. And there's a lot of work to do, you know. Um, it, we don't just sit around passing the time, twiddling our, our thumbs, waiting for 
um, waiting for, for things to finish here. We have an important um, participation, privilege of participation, obligation of participation. And so this is the way that one of the ways that we do it is to um, to teach our children and look at the Bible and, and read it and believe it and do it. Exactly. You know, I've never done one, but I've heard that there's this thing people do call escape rooms, that they pay some money and then they have to figure out how to escape from a situation. And I imagine that's probably fun unless you're claustrophobic or afraid of the dark or something like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the views that Christians have are how can we escape this present world? Right. And you know what? We're not supposed to escape. We're supposed to confront and take dominion and remember that when the Bible says mm -hmm. the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ, it means that we are advancing and hell is worried. Not we're worried. Hell right. is worried. Right, right, right. Yeah, because we don't want our homeschooling to be a form of escaping. You know, right. there's a lot, there's ideas of, uh, you know, that the end of time and people trying to escape that or escape these hard things. We don't want to do that. You're absolutely right. We do need to um, be uh, to have a proper um, orientation and um, and move in terms of that. And the greatest thing one Christian can do for another is when that person is feeling down or very, very myopic that everything is closing in, remind them of this truth. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, most of the counseling and mentoring I do, people will call up with very, very particular detailed situations. And it's usually helping them pop out of the bubble of the trouble and looking at the victory is already outlined for you. Just don't be surprised that in a sinful world, you bang into your own sin and other people's sin. In other right. words, put, get, you know, get the glasses back on. You took your glasses off. And of course, that's why you can't see very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, friend, it's been a very interesting um, conversation. And so we're getting close to the end of our time. But I'm sure folks will want to um, get that book. It was quite an eye opener. For me and um and uh, there's a lot of things in there that that we don't even really realize the ways that we we fail to walk in them it's real easy to say oh yeah i read the back of the book i know we win in the end but what are we doing in the meantime you know i, I submit we win in the process I not agree. only win in the end we win in the process exactly exactly well let's let's let us be found faithful Today, okay. every day the Lord gives us, lets us wake up is another day that he has use for us. And we need to be um, faithful to that. All right. Well, I'll see you next time where we explore another aspect of curriculum foundations. Very good. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining Andrea Schwartz and the Kingdom Driven Family Podcast. Holding up the family and self-government as a true and lasting means of transforming society. Please visit thekingdomdrivenfamily.com and reconstructionistradio.com.